the El Segundo blue butterfly is listed as an endangered species and it had only been known ever from the El Segundo dunes which go from Bayona Creek down to the Palos Verdes Peninsula and it was entered onto the endangered species list quite early uh, in the 1970s uh, because its distribution had been limited to uh, really the, the dunes at Los Angeles International Airport, um, a little site at the Chevron Refinery in El Segundo, and a not very well known, very small site uh, down uh, near the Palos Verdes Peninsula at the southern end of the Santa Monica Bay. And uh, because of that, the limited range and the urbanization had basically taken care of uh, the rest of the range. Uh, it was on the endangered species list. Uh, and so our project, uh, it's a butterfly that, that uh, feeds on a single plant, uh, the coast buckwheat or the sea cliff buckwheat, and uh, requires that plant for its whole uh, life cycle. The adults nectar on it, the larvae uh, eat the flower heads, uh, the pupae are formed underneath the plant. It's really tied to this one species of plant. And so with the plant gone and replaced largely by ice plant, um, which is an import from South Africa, uh, the habitat for the butterfly was gone. I kind of had this aha moment um, going down to uh, inspect some sites at Malaga Cove, which is where that other uh, relictual native site was. Um, and I parked there at the beach and I looked north and it was just all this ice plant and I thought, geez, if we could just take that out and put back the native plants, this butterfly would be doing great. But with uh, any species, if you've got it limited to only three locations, it's in a bit of peril. And so our project involved uh, uh, putting back uh, the native dune and uh, bluff uh, vegetation, including that food plant for the, for the butterfly, um, at a couple of sites in Torrance and Redondo Beach. We had two sites, uh, one in Torrance, which was uh, directly a project for the Los Angeles County uh, Department of Beaches and Harbors, and the other which was funded by uh, state grant money in Redondo Beach, which was somewhat larger. And uh, we did not expect when we did this uh, that the butterfly would get there. The, uh, the research on the butterfly suggested that it moved uh, very short distances, that it was very closely tied to its food plant, um, and that uh, you know, if it was going to make it to these new habitats, we'd probably have to help it along. Um, and this was based on the published uh, literature that was out there and people's experience with the species. Um, however, now, I guess, three, four years later for the two sites, the butterfly shows up, you know, making me look a little silly, <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, surprising me uh, and, and others uh, who, who didn't think that it would happen on its own. And so that's been a great uh, reward of the project. And, and this is one of the instances where it's the sort of bluff of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come. Um, and in this instance, they came, which was a really great surprise. The population that's now established at uh, Torrance and Redondo Beach um, seems to be uh, relatively dense. Um, we saw a couple hundred butterflies in, in uh, over a, uh, this four acre area in, in a day uh, and it's probably um, then more butterflies there than were, are actually present on that native site that, that was there previously uh, to the south from where the, the colonists came so to speak. and. Um, this is great progress along the road to potentially downlisting the species. Uh, there's a recovery plan in place that requires the establishment of a series of protected populations in different parts of the historic range of the species uh, in order for the, the classification to be changed from endangered uh, to threatened. And uh, if this uh, progress continues and uh, other areas are likewise restored and there are uh, projects uh, in the works in, in uh, Manhattan Beach, uh, Dockweiler, uh, other areas up and down uh, the, the Santa Monica Bay. Uh, if these areas are restored, the butterflies return and they're stable and are protected, then the Fish and Wildlife Service, the federal agency that's responsible for um, the, the maintenance of the Endangered Species Act and its implementation, um, can consider uh, changing the classification, uh, just as what recently happened with the bald eagle.